In this video, we're going to go over the Work Kinetic Energy Theorem. The Work Kinetic Energy Theorem states that the total work done in an object is equal to the change in kinetic energy of that object. In equation 4, it's total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This theorem is useful for solving a variety of different types of problems. We'll take a look at how it works with a couple examples. So, in our first example, an 800 kilogram car is initially traveling at 10 meters per second. The brakes are applied, producing a constant decelerating force of 2,000 newtons. How far will the car travel before stopping? All right. So in this case, we can recognize that this is a work kinetic energy theorem because first of all, we're looking at a situation where a car initially has kinetic energy and it's slowing down to a stop. So there's a change in kinetic energy. Second, they're talking about a force, the decelerating force being applied and how far the car will travel. So a force acting over a distance doing work. So to solve this, we know that the only force that is going to be doing work here is the force of friction. So the work being done by the force of friction has to equal the change in kinetic energy of this car. So the work here we know is F D cosine theta. Change in kinetic energy is final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy, K E F minus KEI. In this case, we know that the force is friction. The equation for friction, in this case, kinetic friction, is mu sub K times normal force. But what's helpful here is instead of having to calculate the force, they just tell us that it has a value of 2,000 newtons. So we have 2,000 times the displacement, which we're trying to solve for, times cosine of theta. If you recall, friction is always in the opposite direction of displacement. So theta is going to be 180 degrees. This is equal to the final kinetic energy, which is zero because at the end, the car has come to a stop, minus the initial kinetic energy, which is one half mv initial squared. Again, we want to solve for d, so you have 2,000 times cosine of 180. Cosine of 180 is just negative 1. So on the left side, we have negative 2,000 d is equal to negative 1 half the mass, which they tell us is 800 kilograms, times the initial speed, which they tell us is 10, and we have to square that. So the left side still negative 2000 D. This is equal to 10 squared is 100. 100 times 800 is going to equal 80,000. And then 80,000 divided by 2 is going to give us 40,000. And the negative signs cancel out on both sides. So we're doing 40,000 divided by 2,000, which is going to give us an answer of 20 meters. So in this case, from the work kinetic energy theorem, we figured out that the car is going to skid a distance of 20 meters before coming to a stop after the brakes are applied. All right, so this is one example here. Let's take a look at another example. So here, a person pulls a five kilogram box with a rope at an angle of 30 degrees and a force of 80 newtons. If the box is initially at rest and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2, what is the kinetic energy of the box after being pulled two meters? Okay, so here we have a situation which would be helpful for us to draw out. So if we draw out the situation, we have this box which has a mass of five kilograms and it's being pulled with this force of tension of 80 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. Other forces involved, we know there is also a normal force. We know there is also a gravitational force. And there is this force of kinetic friction. So to talk about the kinetic energy, we need to figure out what is the total work done. 
Now in terms of the total work done, we know a few things. The normal force and the gravitational force aren't going to do any work. So we don't have to worry about these forces. The total work done is going to be looking at the work done by the force of tension and the work done by the force of kinetic friction. So we want to look at the work done by the tension force. This is going to be the FD cosine theta, so the force of tension times the displacement times cosine theta for tension. In this case, the displacement is going to be to the right as it's getting pulled, right? It's getting pulled along the ground. It's not getting pulled into the air. So the angle between displacement and the force is 30 degrees plus the work from the force of friction, which friction we know is mu sub k times the normal force times displacement times cosine of 180. Again, we've seen several times now that friction is in the opposite direction of displacement, so it's 180. So now, if we plug in a few values, we have the total work is equal to tension, which we know is 80 newtons, the displacement, we're saying 2 meters, cosine of 30 is 1 half, plus mu of k, we know that mu of k is 0 0.2, and we need to know the normal force. Now, here it's a little bit more complicated than usual, because usually we just say that the normal force is equal to mg. But here we actually have another force that is acting in the vertical direction, and that's the vertical component of tension. So to work that out, let's just consider the vertical direction here in terms of the forces. We know that the net force in the vertical direction still has to be equal to zero, and that's going to be the normal force plus the vertical component of tension minus gravity is equal to zero. So that means the normal force is equal to gravity minus the vertical component of tension. Gravity, we know, is equal to mg. The vertical component of tension, we know, is equal to f of t sine theta. All right? And that actually makes us realize that cosine 30 is not, is not 1 half. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Sorry about that. So minus f of t sine theta. So in this case, mg, the mass is equal to 5 kilograms, gravity is equal to 10, minus tension, which is 80, times sine of theta, here it is sine of 30, right, vertical component, so it's going to be 1 half. So here we have 50 minus 80 times 1 half, which is 40, so that means the normal force here is going to be 10 newtons. So we can use that value over here, so we have 0.2 times the normal force, which is 10 newtons, times the displacement of 2, times cosine of 180, which we know is equal to negative 1. So now here on the left, the total work here is going to be 80 root 3, plus 0.2 times 10 times 2 times negative 1. So this is going to be subtracting minus 4. All right. So the last thing we have to do here is with this root 3. If you call root 3 is about 1.7. So then we would have 1.7 times 80. And if we multiply the two together, the 1 times 80 is going to give us 80. The 0.7 times 80 is going to give us about 56. So that's going to be 136 minus 4. So that means the total work done is 132 joules, which by our work kinetic energy theorem is going to be equal to the kinetic energy of our box after being pulled 2 meters. All right. So here's two different examples of how we're applying the work kinetic energy theorem to calculate the answers to questions of different situations.